town on Tuolumne, a very loving Christ-centered church, as you all are. I'm very happy and honored to be here. Amen. I'm going to tell you a little story about Lisa, five years old. Her uh, mother invited the elders and the deacons for a Sunday dinner to show her appreciation and their wives. So there was about 12 to 15 people coming to dinner. And she worked hard and slaved all week. Finally, the time came, doorbell rang. Doorbell rang, and everybody entered and started talking and chatting. And finally, they sat down to the dinner table. And Mrs. Jones asked Lisa, her five-year-old daughter, to bless the food. And Lisa goes, Mommy, I don't know what to say. And her mom said, Lisa, just say what Mommy says. And Lisa says, Dear God, why did I invite all these people? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times, We become what we behold. True. What we listen to, what we see. Mm -hmm. And this morning, we're just going to take a look at Jesus the Christ. And what his ministry is. <clears throat> and his life on earth. And, and, and we're, we're going to do that going through Isaiah 53, which is, which back in Isaiah's time was a prophetic description of Christ. And actually, if, if you go through Isaiah 53, it's about a two to three hour study. And if you have a margin in your Bible with, with a correlating text, that would be a great Sabbath afternoon activity today. Because we're just going to touch on a few points and, and we're going to have a conversation. The conversation is going to be about Jesus. Is that okay? That's yes. great. And before I start, I'm just going to pray. Dear Lord, I thank you. Dear Father, I'm weak. I'm a sinner. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through me with your Holy Spirit. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to Psalms, the, the text we had this morning, Isaiah 53, verse 1. And I don't know, sometimes, do you ever get a text, and you've heard it a hundred times, and read a hundred times, but it just won't leave your mind. It just stays with you. It stays with you. And that was Psalm 53, verse 1. Who has believed our message? Question mark. And the question to you today, do you believe this message? And the second half of the verse. I have to turn the page. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And that's talking about Jesus. If you will, turn with me on. I have the New American Standard. Uh, Acts 8, verses 25 through 39. And this is depicts the story of Philip. And actually, Philip's one of my favorite Bible characters, because he got taken away and transported by the Holy Spirit. Acts 8, what? 25. We'll start with verse 25. Excuse me. Are we going to start verse 26? But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get up and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he got up and went, and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. So this man, this man number one, was educated. Number two, he was a mass guy. And I'm an English history Bible guy. Math and science and I just don't mix. <laughs> so he was very 
methodical in his thinking, deductive reasoning, very, very bright. And here, here we see the angel t telling Philip to go to this man. He had come to Jer Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join the chariot. Philip ran and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent. He does not open his mouth. In humiliation, the judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? From his life is removed, for his life is removed from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth. He opened his mouth. When we are sharing Jesus with people, open your mouth. And let them know what Jesus means to you and what he is. Philip opened his mouth. And beginning from the scripture, he preached Jesus to him. As they went along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, water. What prevents me from being baptized? And I'm going to stop right there. Along with the Holy Spirit and Philip's willingness to witness to the eunuch, how excited was this man when he saw water? Very. Look, water stopped the chariot. And we know the rest of the story. He was baptized. So we're going to take a look at Isaiah 53 today. And just touch on a few points, try to have a conversation on how we can stop the chariot and get somebody baptized. Okay, as, as we go through Isaiah, and, and if you want, you can stay in Isaiah 53, because we'll be going... our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed well if we look at Isaiah 52 verse 10 it's going to tell us who the arm of the Lord is the Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all nations that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God That's in the person of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, verse 2. For he grew up before him like a tender shoot. Do you ever see for the gardeners out there and farmers when you plant something and that first little shoot comes up? It's a baby plant, right? Mm -hmm. Tender, pristine. That's talking about the birth of Christ coming as, as a baby. And like a root out of parched ground, he had no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him. And, and what that what it's telling us is that there was no attraction to Christ, no jewelry, no other than his character and his surrender to his father. That was the only attraction. There was no other, there was nothing else attracting people to him. Not his clothes, not his car, he didn't have a car, just making a point. Not his clothes, not his car, not his house. But the character that had surrendered 
to his father. He was despised and forsaken of men. I, I just want to stop here, here a minute. We look at the ministry of Jesus. The Pharisees, the scribes. The Pharisees were there to promote God. They were there to make Jerusalem a light on a hill. But when Jesus came, and preached a little different gospel because they had lost their way. They despised him. And they despised him so much that they tried to trap him. They tried to kill him. They tried to stone him. He was despised by his own. And sometimes, and I don't know about you, and I know it's happened to me. Has somebody said something about you that just wasn't true? Mm -hmm. Man, that's horrible. It hurt. And not, not only that, but it hurt. It could have consequences. It could, you could lose a job. You could go to jail. Mm -hmm. You could lose finances. If somebody spreads rumors and lies, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what Jesus went through. Because they didn't know who he was. And I think they knew who he was. They, they just didn't like the path he was taking them on because they didn't want to go down that path. And remember, Isaiah was written hundreds of years before Christ. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he bore and our sorrows he carried We know what Jesus went through. And if you are grieving or have sorrow, you got to take them to Jesus. Amen. He bore them. He bore them all the way to the cross. Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. How deep, how dark, how bad, how despicable. Take them to Jesus. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and like one from men, hide your face. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through, pierced through, for our transgressions. He was, in the, your Bible, it will say bruised. The actual literal Greek translation would be crushed. He was crushed for our iniquities. And I want to talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to talk about him being pierced. Jesus on the cross. He pierced his hands and feet. They spit on his face. They pulled his beard. They beat him until he was disfigured. And all this was done for me, for my sins, my iniquities. And all that was done for you. And there's a reason that Christ bore all that for you. And the reason is he wants to be with you. Amen. And I find that quite amazing. Amen. I just had some major car repairs. Major dollars. And, you know, I was hoping somebody would step up and pay that bill for me. <laughs> you didn't call me, man. I mean, I, I should have I called you. Um, and, and I thought in preparing a, a, of this sermon, what it would mean to me, mm -hmm. just out of the blue, yeah. hey, Rick, here to check for your car is there. You know, the old hymn, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Jesus Amen. paid it all. Sure did. And the text goes on to say, in some translations, he was bruised. Out of the original Greek, is crushed. 
And the word cross reminds me of the Garden of Gethsemane, which Gethsemane means olive press. And have you ever seen them make olive oil? And they crush it. They crush it. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus crushed under the weight of our sin, under the weight of our iniquity. And Ellen White tells us that he lay prostrate on the ground, clutching the earth in his hands. And that sweat and blood came through his pores. He was being crushed by me. He was being crushed by my sin. He was being crushed by my iniquity. And as he grasped the earth, trying to hang on, with that earth in his hand, I used my sanctified imagination. He was thinking how he created man and what sin had done and that he had to finish the redemption. Hmm. Gethsemane was brutal. Even the pain of the cross did not have the weight, the separation from his father, the burden, the guilt, the shame of our sin that he took with him it was crushing him, crushing the life right out of him. And the question is, why? Because he loved him. <clears throat> now, and we see Jesus being crushed in Gethsemane, and we see him hanging on the cross, and it's all to restore us to our original state. Mm. He gave us a garden home, a home with a view. But man sinned, we, 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 we know the story. In, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, it also tells us that there will be thorns and thistles as a result of sin. Nakedness, thorns and thistles. They took a crown of thorns and put it on his head. A crown of thorns. The causes of sin were taken to the cross. And a direct result of sin, you shall surely die, was taken to the cross, restored, done. That's why he cried out, it is finished. It wasn't done as he resurrected, but it was finished. Amen. Restoration Amen. began for man. Thank you, Jesus. It 
Gethsemane and the cross paved the way for us to be restored. And this is what the eunuch saw. And this is what excited him. Back in, in uh, we're, we're going to go to verse 1 in Isaiah 53. That all week, this text and this verse just haunted me. Who have believed our message? Who have believed that Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, Jesus Christ came to save our sins, Jesus Christ died on the cross to restore you and me, to pay our penalty. Who has believed this? Hmm. Have you? I have. Have you? Yeah. Do our lives show that we do? Hmm. In what we say, in what we do. Sometimes we get caught up in doing. Mm -hmm. I call that cock a doodle doo religion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do, 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 do. But if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you can do all day long. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to earn you anything. But if we have a deep, adoring love for Christ, I have to love my brother. I have to love him. Because Jesus loved him and Jesus paid a price. Mm -hmm. And if I don't love him, I need to pray, dear God, give me love for my brother. If I'm feeding the homeless, I'm not feeding the homeless for brownie points for myself, no. Or as re collecting raffle tickets for heaven, hoping my number comes up. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus loves them, mm -hmm. and Jesus died for them. I'm going to help the homeless, and that's in everything we do. Our tithe came, brother and sister. God woke you up this morning. Amen. So grateful. Amen. And in my business, some people don't wake up. That's right. And what I do, I see them every day. You are blessed to be here. You are blessed to be breathing. Be grateful. So, in our attitude, our attitude has to be one of love. We see in Isaiah 53, Christ, the arm of the Lord, as a servant to others. But not begrudgingly and not to earn points and not to do anything, but to please God. Mm -hmm. And the things that we do every day, and I know, you're on, I know. But it's, it's the desire of my heart to, I want to please God. You know, whether it's in our tithe pain, whether it's in our diet, whether it's in our Sabbath keeping, I want to please God. And sometimes, being part of the human race, what, what we like to do is compromise, become logical and give reasons why God would be okay with what I'm doing that's mm. not really pleasing. Mm. Is that what we do? <laughs> well, I can't do that on any other day but today. Then you don't trust God. Well, I can't pay tithe because i got to pay this bill. You don't trust God. We look at the servant in Isaiah 53. He trusted God. In so much as God resurrected him. Do we trust God that much? Mm -hmm. who, who is our trust in? Is it in our, ourselves? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sinus infections killing him. Who 
Who, who, who do we trust? Do we trust God or do we trust ourselves? And bottom line, the question is, is God God or are you God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who are you serving? For me, for many, many years, the word surrender, and if you know me, you'll understand. The word surrender is not existent. I don't surrender. Ever. Not happening. Mm -hmm. Until I understood that until I surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, I was going nowhere. Nowhere and no how. Mm. And little by little and day by, and I'm not totally surrendered, but little by little and day by day, I'm more surrendered than I was last week. I'm more surrendered than I was last month. Amen. Because there are things we want to hold on to. Mm -hmm. They become a habit. They become intertwined in who we are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are not pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. We need to get rid of those things. When we look at Isaiah 53, we look at the willingness of Christ to go through what he did. Mm -hmm. We look at the surrender to his Father. Mm -hmm. How surrendered he would have had to be, knowing that he was God. Jesus was God. Mm -hmm. And in a snap of a finger, a word out of his mouth could have obliterated mm. everything and everybody. True. Mm. True. With no consequence. It was a judgment. So, why do I think that I'm God? And it's about I, 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 I. It's not about I, it's about him. Amen. And to surrender to the will of God every day. And we see this in Isaiah 53, and I highly, highly suggest today, beloved, for a Sabbath afternoon activity, if you have the margin in your Bible, just do that study. It'll open your eyes to how surrender Christ was. Mm. Okay, we're, we're going to continue. And, and I'm just going to be reading from uh, Isaiah 53. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging we are healed. In your Bible it says strife. Out of the original Greek it says scourging. Strife is kind of like scorning with an actual beating with a whip with a cat of nine tails. He was scourged for our healing. Now that means whether it's spiritual healing or physical healing, our healing comes through who? God. Through Jesus Christ. And sometimes we lose sight of that. Sometimes, here, here again, Surrender. If you have a health, a health issue, surrender it to the Lord. If you have a spiritual issue, surrender it to the Lord by His stripes. Are you healed? Mm -hmm. And in, in the original Greek, by the scourging, and that's a whooping, one that really disfigured him mm. on his way to the cross. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Now, I'm going to read that again. That is very profound. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. So that tells us is that by choice, Jesus took our iniquity. And he took it gladly because he loved us so much. 
He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that led to slaughter, and like sheep that is silent before shears. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off, he was cut off out of the land of the living for the wretched of my people, to whom the stroke was due. God says, my people, we are God's people, right? And the stroke was due who? Us. His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death, because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. So we know that, that he was buried in a rich man's tomb. The prophetic value of Isaiah 53. <coughs> And in verse 10, Isaiah 53, verse 10, I kind of struggled with this verse for a while until God kind of revealed what it's about. But the Lord, but the Lord was pleased to crush him or bruise him, if, if you don't have the New American Standard, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a gift off, offering he will see his offspring, that's us. He will pro prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. And by his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many. <clears throat> so here we are again at the cross. It wasn't God's pleasure for Christ to suffer. It wasn't God's pleasure for Jesus to be beaten. It wasn't God's pleasure for his son to have nails driven through his hands. It wasn't God's pleasure for Jesus to be prostrate on the ground in Gethsemane, to water and blood coming through his pores. The pleasure that Isaiah is talking about is your redemption. Amen. Is your redemption my, my redemption? And, and so we're, we're about ready to close. The Ethiopians halted the chariot, wanted to be baptized. Why? Because of what was shared with him. That's because it. Philip opened his mouth and revealed who the arm of the Lord was. And in our daily life, and all we say is that we do, do we reveal the arm of the Lord? Mm. Yes or no? a yes or no question. And if we are to take on the character of Christ, have you been the arm of the Lord? Have you encouraged somebody today? Have you loved somebody today? Have you loved them into the kingdom? You know, we can point fingers. We can cast judgment. And actually for those that want to cast judgment, judgment is an office reserved for God. True. Judgment is not a human quality. The Bible is very clear. But if I see a brother going to a dangerous spot, we'll have a conversation. Counsel him. But judgment and condemnation is not reserved for humans. Amen. We are to encourage, we are to love. Sometimes we don't. Growing up Adventist 
being in the church for as long as I have, I've seen many dear brothers and sisters run out of the church by condemning and judgmental spirit. It's not what Christ has intended. That is not the arm of the Lord. And that tells us what when we say we believe, we don't believe. If God is God, then you need to back off and let God be God. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his restoring of the human race. And this is the last text I'll share with you. And some of you probably know it by heart. It's one of my favorite lines. When I'm kind of down in the dumps, I kind of look over it. In Psalms 103. And you, you can hear the excitement in David's voice. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. And forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Mm -hmm. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all mm -hmm. who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, so to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Somebody can say amen. 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 I hope in this brief time we have together, we have taken just a glimpse into the heart of God. Mm a glimpse into the heart of Christ. The sermon title today was Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're in doubt about anything, whenever you're grieving, whenever you're hurting, whenever, whenever others are coming against you with fault witness, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will be strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. God bless you all. Amen.